Hey guys, Epic Duck Mike here, and this is Tau Orca Project Log number five, probably. It's really early in the morning. Well, not really early. Early for me. So, pretty sure it's five. Want to show you where we are right now? The main chassis is pretty much fully assembled. All the engine mounts are on, the vents are on both sides. Everything fits together at this point. So, we have the command center, the cockpit slash escape pod with its two-piece canopy all four engines there's a little crossbar that goes across this is the rail that if I was putting the battle suits in they would hang from that front roof and back roof. Just a little decorative piece, I guess, to cover up the mesh between the front and back roof here. I think I'll magnetize this on. And on the back side, there's the back door. These are the two pieces which basically form the hinge to hold the back door on. So you'll see right now it'll slip off pretty easily. I did use a single 1 8 magnet here and right there in order to keep the door up once it's closed. I didn't want to use a strong magnet because I want it to be very easy to pry that open if you have to. One other thing I've magnetized, there are two antennas that go on the back and it looks to me like this would probably be the first thing you'd break on the model. So I want to just try and avoid that completely. So there's a 3 16th magnet on the hull and a 3 16th magnet on the back of the antenna. So that's it for the basic assembly of the hull at this point because almost everything is meant to snap on. There are discs that go on here just to keep the engines from falling off, which means that I'll have to paint the engines separately from the rest of the vehicle and paint these separately from the engines. There's a lot of step painting here. So right now my next focus is going to be on painting the crew members, the command center, and probably the escape pod. I'm going to focus on getting all those small intricate details done because I kind of have to paint around them after that. So I'm not really looking forward to command center in a way is that I really want to paint all this because there's a lot of interior detail here. You can see, let me just get this closer to you. You can see the computer screens wrapping around. You can see like there's a lot of detail on the keyboards and so on. There'll be one fire warrior seated here, one seated here, and ethereal seated in the middle. I want to make sure all that's really well detailed. And it's going to be hard to do once it's already inside the vehicle. So I want to paint that beforehand. But then once it's in, I've got to do gap filling up here and around the sides. So I've got to make sure that when I'm doing my gap filling, I'm not damaging my paint job, which is going to be a little tricky, not impossible by any means, but something to consider. I want to make sure that I maintain a really good paint job here and all the detail we want while still being able to fill in these gaps and make it look like a complete model. It also means that I'm going to basically have to prime Use a spray primer on everything inside here, because obviously this interior detail is all important. And then I'm still going to have to gap fill over my primer. And I'll just have to prime that part by hand. It, it's a minor kind of inconvenience, but it's still something I'd prefer not to have to deal with, but I'm going to. So the turret is armed with two burst cannons plus a missile launcher and actually sits in here. And what happens is there's this plate that'll sit on top of the turret. This is actually forms the bottom of the turret, basically. I say on top because we look at the turret upside down. And then this part goes right here. So what happens is when you don't want to use the turret, this slides forward and locks. When you do want to use the turret, this slides back. And there's two rails that glue on either side of this so that it can be slid back and forth. And once this slides back, the turret's able to drop down about half an inch, have the guns kind of come out about a 45 degree angle, which means they're basically meant to be pointing at the ground. And so yeah, then you're provided with a missile pod and two burst cannons that can pivot a full 360 and fold back up and close up again. What does worry me about this is that right where this sliding plate goes for the turret cover is just about where I thought I was going to put some type of mounting device to hold this onto a flying base. So I mean, the only place where there's not any action going on is way up at the nose, which is of no value, or way back here, which I think is too... I mean, all the weight of the model is really right here. So I don't want to have something mounted here. So it looks like I'm going to have to come up with something that 
basically straddles this and will mount maybe here and here. Not quite sure yet how that's going to work. It's really going to have to be the last thing I figure out is how I'm going to put this on a flying base. But I also think that's probably one of the easier challenges. I can probably also use this space right here between the two sort of turret locks to put a flying base peg. Because when you think about it, when it's on the ground, when it's landed, you're going to have your turret locked. So this will be up here and covering that area. But when it's flying, you're going to want the turret deployed. I mean, in reality, you probably would do a lot of flying without a turret deployed. But since this is always going to be used in a game setting and not in reality, in the game, if it's flying, you probably want to shoot some stuff. So you're going to want your turret deployed. Which means that this area will always be free while it's flying. So I can look at probably putting a really, just a high strength magnet here, and see if that'll be enough to mount it. My only worry there is if it's not, I'll end up destroying some of this detail trying to install the magnet. So it's a little bit tricky. We'll figure it out. If you have any suggestions on how to mount this to a flying base, if you've done one before, if you've seen a really good tutorial, uh, post a link in the comments below. And that's it for this update. What I'll be focusing on next is painting the command center and obviously its crew as well as the cockpit and the single pilot in there. Seems pretty small compared to the entire model, but that's where my focus is going to be. And in reality, that's probably going to be about half the painting of this entire model. And then I'm going to be starting on reassembling the burst cannon turret. For it to drop down, it has to be pre-painted as well. Okay, so that's it for this update. Next one, hopefully I've got the characters painted. If I come across something else in the meantime I really want to show you guys, I'll do so. Till then.